Hi, my name is Johnny Shannon. I grew up in a place called uh, South Auckland, New Zealand. I had a pretty heavy childhood. Uh, a lot of a lot of people in my family, a poor neighbourhood. I went to a school and got picked on for a bunch of different things. I think I got picked on because there is a lot of things about me that uh, were easy to pick on a child about. I had a, a massive mole on the side of my face right here. My nickname growing up was Mole Man. Um, I was the second shortest kid in my entire school, which didn't matter too much, but all my brothers were very tall, so I had five brothers, they're all a lot taller than I am. I had very bad acne growing up, and um, big glasses, back in the day when like glasses weren't cool, these days people wear glasses even if they don't need them, and uh, also chronic dys uh, dyslexia, about to say the word wrong, chronic dyslexia, and if you don't know what dyslexia is, it's when you get your words back to front or around the wrong way. So even to this day, I've got the reading ability of about an 11 or 12 year old. I find it extremely hard to read and write, often get words, phrases, numbers around the wrong way. I have a PA, a full-time PA that just does all that sort of work for me. And so growing up, I had these things about me that the best way to describe it would probably be, I don't know if you've ever had like a friend who has like a bruise on their arm before. And for some reason, it's hilarious to poke it. Um, you know, to see the reaction. And I think it's funny, like, if you think about the actual concept, it's ridiculous, like, they're your friend and you're physically hurting them. But I think the reason we do that growing up is because you don't have a lot of energy output, just a small poke, but you see this massive energy output and reaction, and it makes you feel strong. <laughs> you know, one little thing and you see this huge blow up. And if you think about what a bruise is, all a bruise is is sensitive skin. Now, I wasn't sensitive physically, but I was very sensitive mentally in a whole bunch of different areas. And so if someone poked fun of one of those areas or called me a nickname, like short stuff, like mole man, acne face, like ugly, stupid, dumb. Like if someone said one of these things, I just went crazy. And I'd react verbally, I'd react physically. And I got asked to move on from one school, um, went to another school, got expelled from that school and went to another school and it wasn't until my last year of high school where a counsellor got me aside and said why do you think this is happening and I had a very victim mentality I was like it's everyone else's fault no one should be picking on me this is ridiculous but she got me aside and said Johnny I know a lot of people who have worse disabilities than you and they never get picked on maybe the reason you get picked on is because you're hypersensitive and I was like no I'm not <laughs> like I reacted and she said, no, I think you are. And she did one of the things that changed my life. It's the biggest reason I do what I do with speaking to young people. Um, biggest reason, um, biggest level up to how she helped me in, in life, which is she got a piece of paper out and she said, I want you to write down the 10 things that you're insecure about in life. The 10 biggest things that you get picked on that you're insecure about. And I was like, 10 things? Like I could probably write a hundred. Like give me a pad of paper. I could write down 50 right now. But she goes, no, no, it's 60, 10 things. And she wrote a line in the paper and she said, at the top left, I want you to write down things I can change. And on the top right, she wrote down things I can't change, but I need to change my mind about. And so I wrote all these things down and one by one, once it was finished, she goes, give me the pad. She goes, what's the first thing? It said, it's my mole on my face. She goes, Johnny, that's something you can change. When you get older, you can get that cut out if you want to. And I did. I was in New Zealand and the government actually said, look, it could be cancerous. I actually had 36 moles removed from my body, including one right here, completely free. And the funny thing was it healed up so fast that I actually got home and my own brothers didn't even recognize it was gone. It was like the biggest issue in my entire life and my own brothers didn't even realize it was gone. I realized at that moment that I was getting picked on stuff because I was sensitive. I thought it was an issue. No one could even realize it was gone. She goes, what's the next one? I said, oh, it's my big glasses. She goes, Johnny, when you get older, you can get contacts if you want to. That's something you can do when you're older. And when I left high school, I joined the New Zealand military. Yes, New Zealand has a military. Um, when I got there, they actually paid for my laser eye surgery. I have perfect 20-20 vision now. In and out of surgery in less than two hours. One, one day of relapse and you're good to go. Perfect 20-20 vision. She was give me another one. This is getting easy. I said, oh, I know I got pretty bad acne and I was pretty insecure about it. Look, I know a lot of kids have it. A lot of people have it just in general. But she said, Johnny, this to do with an over-inflation of oil in your bloodstream. It's bad now, but when you get older, it's going to act like a natural moisturizer and it'll actually help you look younger 
as you get older. So I just put that aside and then she went to the next one like, hey, what's another thing you get hassled about? Oh, I'm short. Because Johnny, did you realize that people that are short, on average, Google this if you're at home watching this, she said short people on average live six to eight years longer than tall people. Now nothing physically changed about me, but when she told me this, I remember walking home, knocking on my door, you know, opening my door, my younger brother opened the door and he's like six foot two, he's a lot bigger than me. He opens the door and he's like, shame bro, you're so short. I was like, you're gonna die. <laughs> nah, I didn't. <laughs> he beat me up. <laughs> but it just changed my mental mindset of this idea of going, man, before I was super insecure about being short and now I'm just like, that's, that's okay. Like, hey, look, if I could change things around, would I maybe? But when you start breaking down going, people live longer. That, that's okay. You're, you're matching up the negative with the positive and you're helping the truth and you're helping secure your insecurities. Look, I could go on this all day, but I'll, I'll finish on this last one, which is she went through my dyslexia. And um, I said to her, look, that's probably the thing that I find the hardest. It's the biggest reason that I've um, been expelled and all the rest of it is because I just found school extremely difficult. I was failing everything all the time. I felt stupid. I felt dumb. I literally had a teacher one time say, um, at assembly, she got me up and told me to spell the word bus and I spelled it B-S-U. And the whole crowd erupted and that's like one of my earliest memories of just walking home crying, thinking I was crazy. I thought I was insane. No one would tell me like how this came about. And I had all this baggage and she was just like, Johnny, like so many people have dyslexia. You know, some of the greatest minds like Richard Branson, like Albert Einstein, like some of these people she was quoting, she listed like 20, but some of the people she was quoting I knew of, I've heard the names of. And um, she said, did you know that people that can't like read very well often and mainly dyslexic, people that can't read and write very well, they're often a lot better at verbal communication because it's their only communication outlet. It's the only way of communicating. So it's almost like when people uh, go blind, their, their, uh, their ears and everything, everything spikes up. Like they actually, their senses, their other senses actually increase. And it's very much the same with dyslexic. So you can't read or write, but you're often better at verbal communication. And so now I do over 15 one-hour talks. I do university talks that are sometimes three hours straight. And most of my talks, they don't have any text on them <laughs> because I don't want to be like that person to, I don't want to be a guest speaker that makes someone read something. Often they're emojis or they're pictures that I speak to and I've never needed notes. I'm just like, look, I'll throw that picture up, I'll get an image in my mind and I'll describe that image. And that really helped me. But the thing that got me there was her saying, you might not be good at this, but maybe you're good at verbal communication. Maybe join the debating team or the speech team. And I did it and it became one of the first things ever semi, it was still hard, but semi came naturally to me. And that set me up for a win. And that was one exercise. Given mine, I went to her about bullying. <laughs> Not once did she mention bullying. The entire time she said, I'm going to help you become secure in your insecurities. And at the very end of that half an hour session, this is a half an hour, by the way, life changing. She said, if you can become secure in your insecurities, no one else can use those insecurities against you. And that set me up, I think, for life. I went on, and look, the bullying didn't stop, by the way. This is a brand new school. Next day at school, I got bullied about the same thing. Someone, hand over heart, said, get out of the way, mole man, when I was on the lunch line. Like, they said my old nickname. This school was over an hour's drive away from my last school. I still got picked on for the exact same stuff. However, someone has to me about my mole. I thought to myself, goes into your head, instead of reacting, I'm going to cut that out next year or the year after when I finish school. Someone has to me about my glasses. You know what? I'll get contacts in the future. Someone hassles me about being short. You know what? I'm going to live longer than you. <laughs> Breaking it down. And so that's a real way to build security. Is you, you list your insecurities. You say, can I change them? If you can change them, that's great. But if you can't, change the way you think about them. Why? Because you're probably going to have those insecurities, a lot of us, for the rest of your life. So you might as well deal with them as early as possible. Those things are going to be the things that set you up for life. And interesting enough, I got to work with this guy called Brooks Gibbs um, and communications with him back and forth. And he found out that a huge percentage of bullying, it's like 90 plus percent of bullying stops if you don't react to the aggressor or the bullier three times in a row. If you don't react to a bully three times in a row, there's over a 90 percent chance the bullying will stop. But how do you not react to them? This is my point. Is you don't react to them because you become secure in your insecurities. You're okay with it. Yeah, you're sure. I know. Mole man, I do have a mole on my face. You know, dyslexic, dumb, stupid. Yeah, I'm not the smartest at every single topic, but there's a couple of other things I'm good at. 
you get those truth coaches in your mind, that's when you start becoming unstoppable. You can start laughing at yourself, having a good time about it, laughing with friends, and your world opens up. You become very secure. You become a person that people want to hang out with because people don't want to hang out with perfect people. People want to hang out with imperfect people that are secure in themselves and who they are. If you're going through bullying, number one, I feel for you because not only did I get bullied, but I bullied others. At the end of the day, hurting people hurt people. When you get hurt, that pain either is going to come out through two ways. Either one, you're going to talk it out in a healthy way and get rid of it, or two, you're going to act it out. And that's what most ends up happening. So I feel sorry for you if you do get bullied. However, there is like three ways you can get through this that have been proven to work. That I go up and down Australia, New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand and America speaking about this. Number one, become secure in your insecurities. Figure out what are the things you get hassled for and why, and figure out, is this something I can do about it? A lot of bullying, a lot of bullying is not bullying, all right? Bullying, by the definition, is targeted, ongoing, aggressive behavior. Sometimes people get hassled and they think it's bullying. It's like, no, you annoyed that other person. <laughs> like, you're completely at fault. That person reacted. They were not targeting you out for no reason, all right? Repeated, they're hassling you more than once. It's not a, it's not a one-off time. Like they're, they're online all the time. They're targeting you. They're hassling you repeatedly. And the next thing is you don't react. When you react, you're fueling the flames. You're building, you're like feeding the bully. You're like telling them like, oh, that's, that's fun. Like, it's like if your friend had a bruise on the shoulder and you poke him, you see a reaction. That's funny. You see a massive reaction. If you're poking a friend who has a bruise on their shoulder and nothing happens, after a while, you're the weird person poking somebody. <laughs> like, and it's the same in schools. It's the same online. I've seen it time and time again. When people don't respond to someone, they just stay in the back of mind. I'm not going to respond to this person three times in a row. And if anything, if they say something, worst case scenario, I'm going to say something and I'm going to be very passive and nice about it. Hey, you look ugly. Fair enough, man. Everyone has their difference in opinion. I think beauty is the most subjectable thing in the entire world. Like that, that, that de-escalates a problem. But what I've found at schools and online, if you don't say anything three times in a row, usually, usually, bystanders or other people on that chat will generally jump on and be like, what are you up to? Like, the guy's not reacting. It went from a one-off that was sort of funny joke that a lot of people can jump on to now you're just antagonizing this person that's not fighting back. So if you can figure out how not to react, honestly, you'll solve about 90% of the problem. However, number two, if that does continue, that's when you need to talk to someone about it. Um, look, if you're in Australia, you're, you've done well because we've got the things like the e-safety commissioner here in Australia. If you can show that someone's hassled you three times in a row, you take a screenshot, you send it to e-safety.gov.au, we'll follow up on that bullying. All right, so that's a great um, process to have. If you're in another country, more than likely, if it happens three times in a row, you need to take a screenshot, you send it into a local authority. Technically, it is illegal for someone to continually antagonize you for no reason.